we're going to do our July market update right now. It's going to be a two-parter. We're going to sort of showcase the first six months of the year in, uh, in the Calgary market. And then we're going to also showcase the month of June. I guess we'll start off with the month of June, but it's our July market update. And what we want to narrow in on are a few numbers. We, we do this every couple of weeks. We show you how the market's changing, whether it's positive or negative. And right now, we want you to focus in on the top right-hand corner, corner of the screen here, mm -hmm. the total sales. We can see the change June of this year from June of 2022, we're up 8.35%. That's a huge increase considering how high the interest rates have gone and how tough the market is these days. Yeah, so when we see how tough it is, everything's selling. When we list a property, we're getting three, four offers, and we're getting bully offers. I don't know if we've ever explained to you guys what bully offers are. Normally, we'll list a place. We might list it on a Thursday, take offers on a Sunday, while bully offers are coming in. We've had to sell a bunch of properties because bully offers, they don't wait till the Sunday. They just bully on in with their offer, and if they're good enough, they get accepted. So... So you never sit back and wait if your offer is good enough. No, we're not going to wait till Sunday till there's 15 offers. It's going to go in straight away and try and get it before that deadline. So that's what's happening. Everything coming onto the market, Tim, is selling. And you were just telling me one thing about uh, yeah, this if, month. If you, look, if you look at the new listings here, um, June of 2021, 3,700. June of 2022, 3,500. June of 2023, 3,400. So that's basically a flat number. We're seeing the same now amount of listings coming on this June as we did the last couple of Junes. Now that's in contrast with the prior months that we've been showcasing in that our listings for 2023 were way behind the last two years. And you can see that with the total number of active listings here. In 2021, it was 7,100, 2022, 5,500, and then 3,500 this year. Okay. So we only have 3,500 active listings. What we're seeing from these two lines though, is we're seeing it start to, we're seeing ourselves start to trend out of that. And we believe that inventory is going to build as the year goes on. Yeah. And a couple of things, Tim, I know you're going to get into it is interest rates, but we finally hit just above 2,500 listings. So when you see the active listings there, it says 3,568. Well, about 900 of those are pending. So they're already off the market. And then you split the remaining 2,600, Tim, into roughly 1,000 condos, maybe 1,600 um, houses, duplexes. Yeah. So so there isn't a lot of choice. Like we're in, Tim, where were we today? Brayside? Cedar Bray. Cedar Bray. We're in Cedar Bray today. And Tim, our clients only have maybe three or four properties to choose from. So we actually have to wait for more properties to come on and then jump on that property to try and get it. yeah so that's what's actually going on with the market and we have been waiting all year to get above 2500 listings and we finally broke through this month and we'll slowly see it continue and hopefully they keep coming on yeah so we'll move on actually we'll look at one more line here the average price down at the bottom there you can see that June of this year over June of last year, we're up over 7%. Mm -hmm. Now, at the beginning of the year, when we saw interest rates start to climb and climb and climb, the Bank of Canada was you know, really putting a wrench into things. Everybody was telling us, oh, prices are just going to nosedive. This is going to cause the bubble to burst and prices are going to go right down to the bottom. Well, we haven't seen that. We're seeing an increase. Um, I believe year over year, it's only at about 2%, but you know, we're seeing an increase despite the the Bank of Canada trying to slow things down. Now, why is that? Basic supply and demand. There is not enough supply. We've got too many people moving to the province, either from overseas or from other provinces, and we do not have enough inventory for them. Now, why don't we? There's a lot of reasons. We can debate this over and over. Um, you know, government regulations, building costs, all kinds yeah. of things like that. Whatever the reasons are, we're not building enough homes. Yeah, we were running the mass, give you a couple in the waiting room there. Um, we were running the mass on, on just owning something out in Toronto or BC and having a million dollar mortgage. If you have a million dollar mortgage, you've got over $50,000 a year committed to your loan. And that's a lot of money where you can come to Calgary or come to Alberta or different cities. And that's what people are doing and get way less of a mortgage and way more of a lifestyle because you've now got more money in your pocket each month to then go out and spend on things like restaurants or 
going to a sports game or going on, you were saying today, simply just going on another vacation. Like, so people are, it is tightening up out there and we just feel Calgary is very, very well positioned moving forward. And that's not going to change. Like the inventory is going to remain low. Uh, it might go up a little bit. This is our feeling for- Well, the- our resale inventory will go up a little bit, but the new inventory, the new homes, we can't see them building enough new homes to accommodate that sector of the market. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. the the home builders, yeah. they're taking way too long to put these houses up because of the regulations and the and the building costs. Plus, you know, we've got municipalities that don't want any urban sprawl. They want to build inner city, increase the density. Well, that's not clearly not quite working out the way they wanted it to. So until we see some changes, we're going to be stuck in this supply crunch. Yeah. Now, moving on to the next slide, which is our basically our six month update for 2023. We're going to zero in on those same numbers that we were looking at on the last slide. Year to date, um, our total sales are way down. They're down 25% over 2022. And you can see um, that's five or 6,000 sales that were down. Um, five or 6,000 that our clients had the choice of last year, but they don't have this year. Uh, new listings, same thing. 25,000 came on the market last year up till now. Uh, only 17,000 came on the market this year. And that's a, almost a 30% mm-hmm. drop. Now we're seeing that trend in the right way. Mm-hmm. You know, three, four months ago, it was a 40% in the negative, And now we're only 29% in the negative. So we're seeing a trend the right way, but it's got a long, long way to go. And the final thing we're gonna look at here is our average price. Like I said, on the last slide, um, if we're 7% up in June, year to date, we're up almost 2%, going against all the predictions of all the experts around. And we kind of predicted it was going to go up. We mm-hmm. thought it would go up 4 or 5% this year. And as the year moves on into the second half, we may see that 4 or 5%. But right now, we're at about 2 Yeah. And you might be sitting there saying, oh, only 2%. But we have to tell you that different segments of the market is going absolutely bananas. For example, townhouses, Tim. Townhouses are up 10 to 13%. I don't know the exact number. We might have to get it for our next update, but we definitely know the same townhouses we were buying last year for a team low 300s. You can't get those for under 380, 360, depending where you're buying. So they're definitely going up 10, 15% in some cases. So you have to remember why is the low end um, moving? It's because it's the most affordable. And unfortunately, when interest rates go up, people will then get dropped back down into the lower price or the lower price bracket. And that's why it's moving. Yeah. Okay. So we need to shift it. And that's why condos are moving as well. So the last part of the market update that we're going to talk about here is inflation. Now inflation is starting to trend down. We're, we're looking at the numbers, the numbers that came out today, um, inflation for, uh, the month of May. It's, so it's always a month lag. We don't get the numbers reported until, you know, almost the end of the next month, but inflation was 3.4% this May compared to 4.4% in April. So it's trending on the way down. But if you dig into the numbers, um, like if you look at the bottom part of this slide, I'm just moving a couple of things around. Uh, the last line on this slide says, uh, inflation is up, but actual mortgage interest costs in terms, in dollar terms, as of the first quarter, have risen nearly 70% over last year. So with all these huge interest rate increases, people are paying 70% more for their mortgage than they were last year. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a huge number. All you have to do is look at what your mortgage is, uh, what it was last year. And if you were on a variable rate, you're paying a huge amount this year. And we've got a few variable rate mortgages, so we can see that. Mm -hmm. If you're on a fixed rate, eventually that mortgage is going to come due. And you're going to have to mm-hmm. you're going to have to re-up either with that same mortgage company or get a new one, but your interest rate is going to be very high. Yeah. So sometimes you have to look at that. You have to reposition. You may have to pay down some debt. You may, you know, we've got clients that we're talking to maybe maybe selling one of the properties and putting that equity towards you know another property's mortgage. So you cut your mortgage down, whatever it takes. Um, you have to work it out. And the best thing is being in Alberta is that I know it's not the best thing for tenants out there, but a good thing for landlords is that we have to raise the rents. Like you, we can't afford to be swimming in this 
So rents have gone up dramatically. When I say dramatically, a two bedroom condo that used to rent two years ago for $1,250 is now renting for $2,000 if it has an in-suite washer dryer. So that is huge, right? And, um, and so thank goodness for that. But you know that's life at the end of the day for the tenants and for the landlords. You have to make do and you have to work out what properties make sense to hold on to. Um, we did a seminar last month, Tim, Tim, about basement suites. And the reason why we did that is because basement suites can add 40% more yep. to your rental income. And, and so you need to find creative ways like Airbnb or furnished apartments or whatever it takes. We're here to help you. Student rentals is another one that our clients are doing that you can you can make a killing off. And, and I did read in the paper yesterday that one guy was charging $600 for a per bed in a room. We're not saying do that at all, okay? That is not true real estate investing, um, but rooms are renting for $1,000 yes. per room. So we'll keep it at that. And the last thing we wanna look at is the bond markets are continuing to price in another interest rate hike, either in July or August. Uh, we still have to wait, you know, see how the inflation, how inflation does in this month of June, how it does in July, whether we're going to get that. But if it does get raised, another quarter point will be at 5%. And that's going to be probably where the Bank of Canada is going to stop and maybe maintain it for the rest of the year. So we're looking at fairly high interest rates for the next foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. um, it all depends on how the economy does and how it absorbs that, whether it starts to slow things down too much. That remains to be seen, um, but just be prepared for that as an investor. Um, if you're going to buy something, make sure the numbers work. And we're going to get into things that you have to do to ensure being a successful real estate investor, but the numbers have to work. So you need to analyze all of your properties, analyze before you even buy them to make sure that that cash flow covers those expenses. Exactly. And that's what you want to do when you're looking into stats like this. Uh, you want to look into the numbers that help you as a real estate investor, not just as an economic exercise. Mm -hmm. Okay, so speaking of mortgage rates, we always put Danielle DeMarco's uh, contact info up here because she's our go-to real estate investment mortgage broker. She's the one that we use the most because she has the most knowledge of real estate investment mortgages. And she doesn't just get you a mortgage on your next house. She develops a real estate investment plan for you. So for years to come, you can acquire as many or as few real estate investment properties as you want, according to her plan. Yeah, Danielle just got one of our clients ready to go to buy five properties over the next three years. So um, she knows what she's doing. We love it because we get uh, a blueprint of what has to happen with our clients. And we set the expectations. And, and Danielle has various tools that she can use, Tim, to help you get properties easier, faster, and get you cash on the side as well to sometimes help you renovate like Mortgage Plus improvements. Yeah. So we've seen tremendous things with Danielle. Take down her number, take a photo of that. Um, tell, us, tell her you're working with us so she knows it's all about the investment game and then she will get you started. And that is the first step if anyone's thinking about investing in real estate. The first step is always to work out where you are financially, take a snapshot of that, and then work out where you want to be. And if you need to have that conversation with us, we will run through how many properties it takes you. We work backwards on what your end goal will be. And then Danielle puts the plan together. So it's as simple as that. Okay, so that's our market update for this week. 